packaging, so it's all good. But again, I love your story of survival and being a leader and kind of grabbing the reins of your life. So thank you for taking a minute to talk yeah. about it. So let's begin with something that I know that we're all getting tired of talking about, but it was such a big part of our lives, which was COVID and surviving right. the pandemic. How did you ultimately get through that time period? How did it change the way that you do things now? Oh, you know, during COVID, pre-COVID, I was actually a CEO of an airline. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, that uh, that was a, a huge uh, personal and professional commitment. I actually had went on board this uh, airline to be their CEO and help them in, in a smaller airline in BC. Uh, and then COVID happened. So I was working with a venture capitalist group out of the U.S. who were actually going to be investing in the Canadian province for tourism. So they invested in some hotels, some airlines, um, and then and then COVID happened. And being the CEO and the accountable executive, I was required to be on 24 hours a day because there was a legal responsibility. Uh, yeah, it was it was very chaotic. A lot of travelers were very concerned. Um, we still had to fly for work. We had to, you know, be vaccinated and all, we had the restrictions and stuff like that. And then, um, I stayed on post COVID <laughs> for a period of time and our Indian, uh, requirements and restrictions were different than what they were in U S and Mexico. So we were behind that. So I think it, it, uh, it changed a lot of folks and how they interacted with individuals. You could see personality shift during that time and out people were just tired of the containment yeah their so, attitudes changed yeah for sure yeah yeah so let's get to the heart and soul of what you do right now i yeah. know there's been a lot of changes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day and one of the kids is curious and says hey what do you do for a living how do you answer them i help individuals live a regret-free life what did you want to be in the third grade uh, CEO of the boardroom. Okay. So you, you've done it. So how did you evolve to this place? Take me back to where you were born and raised. And what were some pivotal seeds that were planted into you to be a leader, to be a survivor, and to finally take control of your life and help others do the same? So I was raised on a farm in a rural area in Saskatchewan, Canada. I was a farm girl went to the stockyards and stuff with my dad, had a very, I'm going to say privileged life, had an indoor swimming pool, ski trips and all this stuff. And then my parents got divorced when I was 13 years old. And I went transplanted from this life that I knew to a, to a, a place where my mom had grown up and we lived in a, in a low rental uh, uh, individual and at the and location. At that time, I decided that I was never going to rely on others for financial independence. In fact, my mom's car ended up getting repossessed. And when I was 13 years old, my mom had said they weren't gonna have any money for Christmas presents. So I went and got my first job sewing purses for cash when I was 13, so I could buy my mom and my brother um, a Christmas present. So that kind of shaped my mindset to say, um, not, not that it was a great mindset, but you have to uh, focus on what you can do yourself, even though you want to share things. Again, it wasn't probably a healthy mindset, um, but that's kind of what driven me to get a master's and a doctorate degree and and move that forward. So what what's your career timeline look like when you, you know, initially went out there and went after it to today? What's been kind of the the arc of your timeline? Yeah, so I was uh, working within organizations, pushing up that corporate ladder, um, being the CEO, CFO uh, roles. And then I switched because I wanted to take what I learned into helping organizations uh, take that mind shift. So I went from being inside an organization to be a consultant to help those organizations go through changes. So I've for probably the last 15, 18 years, I've worked in companies that are going through organizational change. So I would be like a CEO parachuted in helping the board of directors or the owners change the trajectory. And then I would help them do that. And then I recruit my replacement and then I would transition out. And I did that for uh, quite a few years until I realized the last job I had as the CEO of an airline pre 
and post COVID is that organizations and they're built this way is to provide the greatest value to their shareholders on their return on investment, regardless of the impact it has on the individuals within an organization. So I too spent a disproportionate amount of time building this professional life and I sacrificed personal relationships, doctor's appointments, free time. And I, I had this relationship with my um, work life that if I, you know, if I build this, I'll be able to have this and we can never achieve this, build this. So I switched my mindset and I work with individuals now who uh, want to find harmony. So we talk about work-life balance, but the definition of balance is equal distribution. And you can't have equal distribution when you have work life. It's one or the other. So I look more like the harmony. Um, if you're coming in with a mindset as I'm going to make a conscious decision about investing this time because time is a non-renewable resource. That's all we have. Yeah. And we don't know how much time we have. So that's kind of where I look um, building that as well. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been that inspiration in your life? Well, I'll tell you, when I was 25 years old, I was six months pregnant and I was diagnosed with HIV. Wow. Yeah, I was six months pregnant. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, that was in 1996. Yeah. And I remember when I went to the doctor, um, I was married. I went to the doctor and he told me I was probably going to have only a couple years left to live. Wow. I had um, received the health condition from my husband, unfortunately. So he would only probably, he had had it obviously a lot longer than I. So his life trajectory is going to be different. And that my child was probably going to have a couple years to live. That changed my mindset about building this uh, financial as well platform for my child because I didn't know how long I was going to be here to provide him. So that's where, again, when I was looking at um, sacrificing time to build a business, being an entrepreneur and stuff, I was leaving the relationship with my son. I actually ended up having two children over a period of time. Both of them are HIV negative. So they're healthy and I'm a grandma now and, and stuff, but that, that actually you, you look at how you best want to live your life. And uh, in September I, I wrote a memoir and it's called, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's called resilience, picking up my shattered pieces. Yeah. And I talk about my HIV diagnosis, um, getting divorced, uh, meeting, getting remarried and having to go through that whole disclosure uh, and, and building a life uh, regret free and uh, sharing that journey with with folks. So do you think that was kind of your existential moment in your life where you were kind of opened up to a part of reality that you never saw before and it's made it so much easier for you? to move and to do things career and geographically. Yeah. And I, I think too is sad things or bad things or however we want to do it, happen to everybody all the time. And it's how we frame our minds. I didn't want to die, right? I was 25 years old. I had a trajectory of what I wanted to do and this did not play into that. But for some reason I was, I was given this um, health condition and had to navigate through that. And when I started to realize um, how I wanted to live my life and how I wanted to share that with others and spending that disproportionate amount of time not spending it with my kids, that's where I decided to pick up and relocate to Mexico so I could work from my home, give my kids a different opportunity. Um, the U.S. is a lot like Canada where it's, it's uh, very disposable. Right. People are disposable as well. And I wanted to give my kids that opportunity of seeing a different way um, to live and build their lives. So we relocated down there. My kids went to school down there. Um, they're both back up in Canada now but and, and uh, live that life. But I wanted to share with them and show them that life is meant to be experienced, even though we don't know how it's going to work out. It's it's meant to be experienced. And if you make a decision to do the things you want to do, life will rearrange itself around you. So that's kind of the message I take with my clients is live your life regret-free, regardless of, of uh, the current situation or conditions that you may be in. So your story in your book, obviously, is a testament to resilience and grit and overcoming 
but if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now that embodies that same spirit that you would love to meet and talk to that has done the same thing to other people, who would that be? Brene Brown. Okay. And I'm throwing that out there to the universe. Yeah. Sure. Um, it was it was her um, readings when it talks about courage and vulnerability. When I decided to write my memoir, it was a different version. I wasn't actually going to disclose my health condition. Uh, but my husband and my two kids had said, if you're going to tell your story, mom, you need to tell your whole story. And I remembered kind of Brene Brown when she talked about courage and vulnerability. Um, she was the one that I was studying when I got the courage to tell my now husband back in 2018 that I was HIV positive. And I had to go through that, um, not knowing if he would reject me as an individual, because that's a lot for somebody to take on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or at least in my mind to him, it wasn't, but in my mind, it was who, who would actually love me or who would want to be with me. Um, you know, this late 40 year old woman kind of thing, but yeah. So she, I think her, her knowledge and expertise in the study she does talks a lot about, um, how we should live our lives as individuals. So what is it? What is the drive in you every day to wake up to do the work that you do? You're you're not just going to a job. You're helping people get to a better place, but you have to evolve yourself yeah. as a human being. What is that collective energy for you every day? I like the results that my clients see, um, again, to live that uh, no regret life. And I get excited because when I, when I come, I'll say to work and I get the opportunity to work with my clients, um, it's not just about the... 10xing their financial returns on their business. So the entrepreneurs, the C-suite individuals, it's those life that life moments that um, I feel very grateful to be able to share with them where um, they've had fractured relationships. So a lot of, a lot of us in this space, when I talk about the C-suite or entrepreneurs, we're in our late forties or fifties, some of us sixties or seventies, our kids are grown up, they're gone off to university and we have those fractured relationships. So I'm working with my clients to live their lives regret-free to reach out and build those relationships because at the end of life, and as far as I know, we only get this one, one kick at the can, is when you put your head down on the pillow for the last time. Did you play full out? Did you leave nothing left unsaid? You know, did you try to mend those fractured relationships? Did you do everything you wanted to do? I have a, another client that I'm working um, with uh, early 60s. Um, always wanted to do skydiving, right? So it's, again, it's trying to build up that courage to go and do that. So I'm confident that he will reach that milestone for sure. So in this life of inspiration that you've led, what has been the best advice you've ever gotten? Uh, oh my goodness, so much. Um, I think there's there's a couple. I, I've, from a from a boss back in my early 20s, he had told me one time um, that the graveyard's full of irreplaceable people. So when you spend so much time um, trying to balance your work, right? Um, the graveyard's full of people who, you know, if I just give one more, give one more, give one more, regardless of the personal sacrifices. The other one I think uh, would be uh, Mary Morrissey when she talks about brave thinking, right? Do it afraid. Do what you can with what you have from where you are, one step at a time. So I, yeah. those those are yeah. I've had some some great mentorship and leadership in my life, and and at the end of the day, you have to you have to um, um, stand on yourself. You have to get up and say, regardless of what happens today, you know, I'm going to be brave or I'm going to live fearless. I'm going to do this tomorrow. I don't know, but today I'm going to. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So of everything that you've done and overcome and achieved, what are you the proudest of? Oh, my goodness. Um, believing in myself. Yeah. As as difficult. Um, I mean, obviously, there is, you know, my life has been a roller coaster. I think the biggest uh, personal and personal achievement would be when I believed in myself and took the steps and relocated to Mexico. I bought my house there sight unseen, uh, moved there with my kids, didn't know how it was all going to work out. Um, but I trusted that the universe, how whatever uh, individuals believe, 
Um, I believe in the universe and the universe was going to provide regardless of what I didn't know. And there was a lot of naysayers out there like, how irresponsible are you to move to Mexico with your kids and this and that. But um, I wanted to give my kids that life and I wanted to be able to share precious time with them. Um, yeah, I think that was probably the proudest moment I had. But in general, um, believing in myself, just being proud of me. Yeah. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, everyone that gets your book, but you run the show. What's yeah. your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, I, I say I'm a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I just want to embrace life. If you listen to my Spotify, you would have all different types of genres. I have all different types of movies. Um, at, I have all different types of friends and peer groups and stuff. I think um, my takeaway is embrace all. Yeah. Right. Live full out, embrace all. Um, I've had, like I said, great experiences by being open minded to try new experiences, regardless of whether I thought it would fit with my mindset. I think externally, people think I'm very <laughs> conservative. My son used to say constable, responsible, <laughs> but in reality, I just like to have fun yeah. um, and embrace, embrace life, all chaos. I love it. So if anyone wants to pick up the memoir, they want to reach out, they want to hire you, any of the good business, where do they go? Yeah. So you can go to my website, www.unlockyourpowerwithin, all one word, dot C-A. And in there, you can find all my social media handles. Um, there's also a link to my book, my memoir, but also if your listeners want to pick it up um, separately, it's www.resiliencebook.ca. And that'll take you right there. I love it. Tristina, this has been wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your story. Best of luck yeah. with everything. Thanks. Have a great Thank rest you. of your day. You too. Take care.